So the main benefit of our FAT12 format is that it lets us read from the disk now, and that's what we're going to do in this video. And to really demonstrate exactly what we're going to be doing, I'm gonna show you first what the disk actually looks like inside of a hex editor. So the hex editor I'm using for this is Jex. You can use any hex editor for this. We're simply just going to open the disk image that's inside of our build folder. Uh, if you don't have it, you can just run a make and you'll get the image on your actual disk. And in this disk, we're gonna see generally what we have. And that's going to be this header here, which was the header that we set up in the previous video. So all of this stuff up here, all these header pieces of data. And then we have a whole bunch of space. And then we have some stuff that would be our second sector of our disk. Uh, which if I can get this to work properly here, we should be able to see, yeah, these values right here, the F0, FFFF0F, F, 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 F. this here is the start of the next sector of the disk. So what I ideally want to do is I want to read this data here that I've highlighted into memory in my program. That will get us started with reading from the disk and it will get us introduced to that idea and then we can continue to expand it further. So when we take a look at reading from the disk in BIOS, we're gonna be using a BIOS interrupt, of course, that interrupt is the interrupt 13, which is read disk sectors. So if I provide the value two in AH, it will read disk sectors from my disk. What it requires to do that is it needs the number of sectors to read in AL. Uh, it needs the cylinder or track number in CH. It needs the sector number in CL, the drive number in DH, and the DL is gonna be our drive number here. Sorry, DH was the head number, DL was the drive number. And then we give it a buffer to place the data in. So that's gonna be this BX register will have a pointer to a buffer. Now, when we're taking a look at our disk, really it's easiest for us to think about this in terms of LBA based indexing. And that's because simply sector, that's the first sector on the disk, would have a value of zero in LBA. So if I wanna to get to the next sector, it has a value of one, right? So it's just like incremental, linearly incrementing. It's very easy to think about, but this, interrupt here requires us to have our data in CHS format, requiring a cylinder, a head, and a sector. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert our LBA into CHS, and then we're going to use that to read from our disk. So let's take a look and see how that would work. So right over here, we have our main, and inside of our main, I'm going to do the general setup for our actual function for reading from the disk. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna move the EBR drive number into the DL register. This was sort of the values that was set up here. So we have the EBR drive number right here. It's something that we defined and we moved that into DL because that's where it's expected to be for this call. So we need the drive number in DL, so that's taken care of. I'm gonna move into AX, a value one. So AX in this case is going to be the LBA uh, index that we're trying to read. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna convert it into CHS. So that's what we're gonna do in this process. I'm gonna move it to CL value one. When we take a look at our interrupt, CL is representing the sector number. So the sector number in this case is going to be one. And then finally, we're gonna move into BX, the value zero X seven E zero zero. This is just a pointer to a buffer that currently exists on our disk. So it's a location that we're going to be able to easily work with. So this is a memory location that would be available on our system. So that's why we're setting that value. Now, generally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call a function named disk read. And we're just gonna come down here to where all of our functions are. And I'm going to create this function for disk read. So the disk read function is going to do the following. So we're gonna say disk underscore read. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my read so that it converts my uh, LBA value that I'm providing into CHS format. And then it goes through and actually tries to read using the interrupt 13. So usually what we would do here is we would just push on any registers that we want to preserve. So any registers that we want to preserve on our system. So I'm generally just going to push on the AX. I'm gonna push on BX. I'm gonna push on CX. I'm gonna push on DX, I'm gonna push on DI. Just because these are registers that I'm going to use inside of this function, so I just wanna make sure that they're preserved. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a call to a function called LBA to CHS, which I'm going to write just above here. Now the purpose of LBA to CHS is that it's going to convert that LBA index into CHS form. And generally the way that it's going to do this is I'll just note here, the input to this is the LBA index in AX. 
So that's where it's stored. Remember, we placed it right here in AX. Now, the output for this is going to be in CX, specifically in bits 0 to 5. We are going to have the sector number inside of CX from bits uh, 6 to 15. We are going to have the cylinder. And then in DH, we're going to have the head. So that's where we're storing all of our outputs. So it's just good to know a bit about the inputs and outputs before we start. Now, we're going to be overwriting our AX register. We're going to be overwriting our DX register. So I'm just going to preserve them here. And what we're going to start by doing is we're going to start by zeroing out the DX register. Now we have to think about how do we convert these two values between each other? Well, the answer to that is generally something that we saw when we were talking about the structures of disks. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to do a division. So we're going to divide a word size and we're doing a division of the BDP sectors per track. And what this is doing is it's giving us our first value calculation. So when we're considering the way that this is generally going to be set up, what we're doing is we're calculating each of the different sets. So remember, basically, the way that we get our first piece of information is we need to take the LBA and we need to modulus it with the sectors per track and we need to add one to it, right? So, oh, sorry made that a little bit small. Let's get that back up to normal. So, and we need to add one to it like this. This gives us the value of the sector. So remember, this is the sector here. And let me just set this up so that it will word wrap so that it's easy to see here. So that's our sector, okay? Now, what we are doing here is we're dividing the sectors per track by the LBA. Remember, the LBA is an AX with the division operation. It does a division between EAX and the thing that you provide. So it does EAX and it divides it by the sectors per track, which would be the equivalent of doing LBA divided by the sectors per track. In EAX, we'll get the result of that division. Inside of the register that is um, DX, we will get the remainder or the modulus. So at this point, this modulus this part right here is stored in DX. So we simply just need to increment DX and that would give us our sector. So that's where we get our sector from. So moving on from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into, into CX, the value of DX, and I'm gonna clear DX once again. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to do yet another division. So I'm just clearing out DX. We've stored that value in CX for now just to have it temporarily there. And remember, we do need it there anyways in bits uh, 0 to 5. So we have moved it over to where we basically need it to be. We need to do a bit of modification, but that's, that's pretty close for now. Now, at this point, we need to figure out one of our other setups, whether it be the heads or if it's the cylinder. Now, it turns out that both of these are actually related to each other. So when we're taking a look at this, when we want to calculate the head, the head is actually equal to the LBA divided by the sectors per track. And we're going to modulus that with the number of heads, right? And then remember that the sector or the cylinder rather is going to be equal to the LBA modulus with the sectors per track. And that would be the result there. So one of them is just the division. The other one is the modulus. So in this case here, we're able to get both of these in a pretty easy way. And that is to just do a simple division. Sorry, actually, I just realized that I had these flipped. This one's the modulus, this one's the division. There we go. So the way that we calculate this is pretty simple because right now inside of the, uh, oh, sorry, this is the division here. So this is the modulus. And then this here is going to be divided by number of heads. Sorry about that. That's the clarification. So these are the two values that we're calculating. So right now, LBA divided by sectors per track, this is stored inside of the AX register. We just did that division right here, right? So all I need to do is I simply need to divide by number of heads. And then remember this value here would be stored in AX. And then this here would be stored in DX. That would give us our next two values. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. So we XOR DX with DX to clear it. And then we do a division of a word in size of BDP underscore heads, okay? So remember, we're keeping these calculations in mind. At this point, we have the values that we need. We just need to get them into the right place. To do that, I'm gonna move into DHDL, 
this is going to be setting up this head value, right? We moved it into DH. So we've got this now taken care of. This right here is the head. Now we have to do a little bit of shifting around in order to get the value for the cylinder to bits 6 to 15 and the sector into 0 to 5. The way that we do that is we just say, okay, we're going to move into CH, the value of AL. And I'm going to do a little shift with AH by 6 bits. And then I'm going to OR CL and AH. What this is effectively doing is it's setting the bits that we need in the proper location. So it's just moving everything over in order to place those bits where they're required. So basically we move the value into this A register, we then shifted it where it needs to be and then we OR it, which is basically just going to copy the values over into the register. At this point, we have everything that we need. This here, I think set up our cylinder, right? Which would be the value in CL, as we mentioned here. So the cylinder, right? And we have everything that we need. So at this point, we can just go ahead and pop AX off, which we were preserving. We're going to move into DL, or we're going to move AL into DL, right? Just to store it in that location. And then we pop AX to get that value back. And then we just return back. So at this point, everything is where we need it to be. Everything is looking good. And we can go ahead and move on. So at this point, we have everything in the proper format. So now what I want to do is I want to read data from the disk. And to do that, I know I have to move into AH, the value two. Now there's something really interesting about reading from disk with BIOS. And that's this note right here that's important. So the BIOS disk reads should be retried at least three times. And the controller should be reset on error detection. Basically what they're saying here is when we read a disk, we want to make sure that we're reading in a reliable way. If you read once and it fails, it could have just been something that went wrong and we can read again and succeed. So what it's saying is that you should try reading at least three times in order to see if, you know, the first one errored for some other reason. Uh, if you manage to error three times in a row, then probably the disk is faulty or something is wrong with the disk and we can throw an error in that case. But generally that means that we want to repeat this three times. So to do that, we're going to do a loop. So the way that we could do that is we can move into di the value three. This is just our, basically our counter. And then we're gonna set up this like retry label. And what I'm gonna do is I want to be able to check to see if it succeeded, which means that I should be looking at the carry flag. So it's either a one on error or a zero if successful. Now it turns out that some BIOS actually don't set the carry. So before we start, we do an STC and that's going to set the carry for us. So then what we do is we do our interrupt for 13H and then we take a look at if the carry was set or not. If the carry was set, then I'm gonna to go to done read, which I'll just define down here and we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. If the happens to you know read and it gets an error, then that JNC will not execute. And what we'll do instead is we'll call a disk reset. What a disk reset is gonna do is it's gonna reset the disk driver and I'll show you how that's done in a moment here. We'll just finish off this loop. To finish off the loop, we decrement DI. We then are going to check to see if we had any sort of, you know, uh, situation where we've reached zero, which we could just do in this way. And if it's not zero, then we'll go to retry. Now, if it is equal to zero, we're going to call this a fail. So we'll just drop straight through into this fail label here. Uh, we'll call this fail disk read just to be a bit more descriptive. And in this, what we're going to do is we're just going to print out an error message. So that error message is basically just going to be printed through a, a print like we've done before. So we move into SI. Um, I'm going to call my string read failure and then I call print. And then I'll halt. And in the case where this you know, the halt somehow fails, I'm just gonna to jump to our infinite loop that we have here, which is called halt. So we'll just jump up here, okay? So there we go. So that's the situation that we have right here. Now this read failure I need to define, of course, it's gonna be just a simple message that just says uh, failed to read disk. I'm gonna add the new line characters. And there we go, we're done. So that gives us our error. Now, 
there's one more piece that we have to deal with here. Well, there's two more pieces. There's done read, and then there's uh, the actual reset of the disk driver, so disk reset. Let's take a look at disk reset first. What disk reset is going to do is it's going to reset the drivers of our disk. So I'll just move this. Uh, I'll move this down here. We'll do it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by preserving our registers. So we could do that using uh, push A, which will just push all of the general purpose registers onto the stack. We're going to move into AH, the value zero. So basically what this is doing is if we take a look at our int 13 system calls, we have this 13 zero reset disk system. So it takes in zero as AH and the drive number it will also need, which I believe is already set. So we don't need to set it ourselves. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do an interrupt on 13H. And to make sure that it succeeded, we're going to check the carry. So we'll do a similar technique to the other carry check where we set the carry uh, just in case the BIOS doesn't set it. And then we do a jump carry to floppy or we'll go to like an actual error itself. So we'll go to uh, fail disk read. Because if it fails to reset it, then we're going to want to go to a failure type of function. So we'll see here if it's actually set the carry flag, then it will be an error. So we'll just jump up to the fail disk read. Now, if we didn't fail, then we're just going to pop all of our registers back off and we're going to return back from this function. And then the final thing that we need to do here is just this done, which is going to pop off our registers just to restore our system back to the previous state. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test this because we should be all good to go now. Okay, so with this, everything has been written. We have our code to read from the disk. It's quite a bit, but hopefully this was relatively easy to follow. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to actually test if this read was successful because we're not really printing anything out. There's not really anything that we can really print too easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this through a debugger. So like I said before, our goal is to read this data from the disk. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something kind of fun. I'm going to change these values really just out of the reason that if we have a whole bunch of Fs, it's a little bit hard to actually, you know, find the value that we're looking for. If I change them to something more unique, it will be easier for me to find it. And actually I just realized that when I run a make on this, I'm going to have to rechange these. So it's just uh, run that now. So I'm going to do my make that's going to build up my image. We'll come back over here to my hex editor and I'll just reopen that image. And inside of this image, we're just going to go ahead and change these values. And we could do this fine because we're not really doing anything with the values. So it's fine for me to change them here. Now, we of course wouldn't change these values in like a production based environment or later on. I'm just doing this for the sake of making it easier for you to see the actual changes. So with those set, we're going to run QMU. Now I can run this just normally the way we had it before. And you'll see that it shows our OS has booted. It doesn't show any message saying failed to read disks. So it seems like everything is working. But to verify it, what we can do is we can run this in debug mode by providing hyphen S and then hyphen capital S like this. If we provide these two arguments, you'll get this sort of idea. It will say guest has not initialized the display. So it's basically, it's set a breakpoint at the very beginning and it's waiting for us to connect with the debugger. To connect with the debugger, we just use GDB. So I run GDB, then what I do is I go target remote local host colon 1234. 1234 is the port number that QMU runs its debugger on. So we're basically connecting to QMU using GDB. At this point, we're connected. I'm going to change my layout to ASM. I'm going to set a breakpoint, and that breakpoint is going to be at 0x7c00. That is the start of our program, and we know that because we set the origin here. So with that set, what we're going to do is we're going to type in continue. And that takes us to our code. And I'm just going to step through this until I reach my disk read. I know when I've reached it because this first jump will take me to the disk read function. The second one, this call here, is taking me over into the actual conversion of the LBA to CHS. And then as we continue down here, right here is my actual portion that we're working with for reading the disk. So this is where we actually do the interrupt to read from the disk itself. Now with this interrupt here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint 
at the end of it. So 0x7c60, that's the very end of this set of code. The reason why I do this is because with GDB, for some reason, when you step into these interrupts like uh, 13, it kind of gets lost. I think it's trying to debug the actual interrupt code and it becomes like really hard to find where you are. So I just set a break at the end and I continue over to it. Now, once we're at this point, we should be able to actually read our register. So assuming I'm at the right place, I could take a look at the register as the buffer, which is EBX, and we see 7E00. So if I take a look at that memory address, what I should see is the area of the disk that we tried to read. And you see that exact thing, right? So you can see why I set these specific values. They're easy to see. E1, D1, C1, B1, A1. It matches these two sets of memory. Therefore, we have read the disk successfully and everything is working as expected. So everyone is happy here. So at this point, you now have a very basic read of a disk. So you see that like the actual concepts of it are not overly complicated. There's a lot going on, but when you break it down piece by piece, it's not so bad. I highly recommend you taking a look at each of these functions and just trying to work through understanding how they're working. Specifically the LBA to CHS, because this could be a little bit complicated. The other part here, I don't think is too bad. I think just understanding the way the retry works and understanding that the reason why we're setting the carry is just because BIOS sometimes doesn't do it. So if we set it, then do the interrupt, it either gets set to zero or it was an error, right? So those are the main key ideas that I want you to take away from this. And from here, we could start to actually build out a file system and start to work with files on our disk in a more intricate format. So thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.